Hello friends. Welcome to part six of Steal My Art. This is the final part of the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to forge my painting Lucrezia Claro. If you need to go back to any of the five previous videos, you can find them as part of the curriculum at the unaccredited College of Clare. You can find those along with any other resources I create on patreon.com slash Claire Lockhart. For part six, you're going to finish the painting. Before you get to work, I would like to take a moment and compare my painting where I left it at the end of part five which is the picture on the left versus the final complete painting on the right. One of the first things you'll notice is that at the end, I'm able to do these small details. So my subject now has eyebrows and eyelashes. You'll also notice that some of the shadows have changed on the face and on the neck as well. One of the other areas I worked on was adding more details to the hair Plus, you'll see that the clothing overall is a little darker and the shadows are more dramatic. I'll show you all the steps I took to complete my painting, but when you're working, you may have some variation depending on where you stopped working at the end of part five versus where you want to go to get your painting to a level of completion that you'll be happy with. To finish your painting, you're going to need all of your materials. So of course you need your work in progress on your canvas plus your reference image. And you'll need all your paints and all those supplies that go with it. You'll see I already have my paints laid out on my palette. I have my skin tones mixed up. Plus I have my warm and cool black ready to go. Your painting is very close to being complete and taking the time for these last few steps will really make you proud of your accomplishments. I began this painting session by touching up the eyes and painting the eyelids and surrounding areas. Then I added the eyelashes, which I can really only see on the outer corners of the top eyelids, and there are some subtle lines on the lower edges. Many people struggle painting eyelashes because they want to add straight lines that look like spider legs, but resist that urge. Just softly line the top edge of the eyelids and flick the paintbrush out at the corners. Remember, if you don't get it right on the first try, you can always use a rag to gently wipe off the paint you don't like. I created the eyelashes and eyebrows last because they're so small and nothing else overlaps them. There are many hypotheses about why the Mona Lisa is missing her eyebrows, but it's an unfinished painting. Leonardo da Vinci took it with him when he moved to France, and I would bet that he was saving the eyebrows for the end, but died before he had a chance to paint them on. However, it's also possible that there were eyebrows originally, but they were accidentally erased during a failed restoration attempt. The Prado Mona Lisa, which was painted at the same time Leonardo da Vinci made the original, has eyebrows and eyelashes, but they're very subtle. As I work, I am making my shadows more dramatic by building up additional layers of see-through paint. I make my paint translucent by dipping my clean brush into the Gelkid light, and then I mix it quickly with a small amount of paint which I apply to my canvas right away. When I blend my paint, I do it directly on the canvas's surface. I put two differing colors side by side, and then I smear the colors into each other with my paintbrush. If I don't like how something looks, I can always wipe it off with my rag. It's just important to make sure that the layer you're painting on top of is completely dry. Otherwise, you could accidentally remove lower layers of paint. Because the right side of the subject's face overlaps the hair, I have to finish the hair in that section first before I can complete the cheek. If you're eager to finish this painting, 
You can do all these steps in one session, but if you have a busy schedule, you can break this process down into smaller steps. You could paint the face, take a break, then work on the clothes and hair, take a break, and then do the final shadows and so forth. If you want to do all of these steps in one session though, make sure you have a couple of hours of uninterrupted work time. It took me about an hour and a half to finish this painting, but that doesn't include how long I spent mixing paint and cleaning up. Remember that your recipe for mixing skin colors includes titanium white, zinc white, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, and cadmium red. The darker colors also include burnt umber and burnt sienna, but the darkest skin color doesn't contain any white at all. Also keep in mind that mixing a little ultramarine blue into your darkest skin color mix will make nice shadows for the face and neck. So it took me about an hour and a half just to physically apply the paint to the canvas to finish this composition. It takes a long time to create art, and the time often doubles when you take into account all of the prep work and clean up. In addition to adding more see-through layers of paint to the hair to get the colors accurate, I can now add some small details that will make this painting look even better. Once I am done painting the forehead, I can add the vertical hair follicles that are near the part in order to make the hair look like it's really growing out of the scalp. I can also paint the wisps of wayward strands of hair. I have to wait until the painting is almost complete to do those. If there are parts of your painting that are unfinished, but the gloss dropped out after it dried, you can use a clean brush and apply a thin layer of the Gelkid Light Gamisol mix to make it glossy again. After I think I'm done with the painting, I will let it dry and I avoid looking at it for a few days. For the portrait of Lucrezia Claro, I waited two days before adding these touch-ups. When I'm able to return to it with fresh eyes, I can spot any details I need to add or shadows I have to adjust. I typically will paint a thin coat of the medium over the finished areas so everything is evenly glossy. I pretty much trace over my original brush strokes so my painting looks unified. This isn't a varnish because it will bond to the paint and can't be removed. I have to wait at least half a year for the oil paint to completely dry before I can varnish it. As you work, make sure that you're consulting your reference image. You're working on this final layer and that's what everyone will see because it's on the surface. Just in case you're unfamiliar with the larger series this painting is from, I created it for my Lockhart Legacy series of oil paintings. At first glance, this is a collection of realistic oil on canvas portraits of my heroic and notable ancestors. To bring the concept of portrait painting into the realm of 21st century contemporary conceptual art, I present all the paintings at once as an installation and an installation is just an immersive type of art that typically encompasses an entire room or gallery. Anyway, I made all these paintings by putting together costumes from eras of Western history, starting at the Renaissance, because that's when oil painting became popular. This portrait of Lucrezia Claro is, as of right now, the oldest of the portraits, but you can see the other ones on my website, clairelockhart.com. I am purposefully not aging the paintings or utilizing any other set dressing techniques since I want the paintings to look a little too good to be true. This is because I want the audience to question the authenticity of the paintings and consider the author, who is me. If this series interests you, you can dive into my Lockhart Legacy Artist Statement on my site, but the gist is that I made this series because I embrace the concept of chosen family and I want to inspire others to construct their own personal narratives. However, I am so thrilled that you are putting in all this effort to copy my painting. 
I know that you're saving a little money by forging this painting instead of just buying the original, but if you factor in all the time and effort you're devoting to this project, you really did everything the hard way, and you deserve some credit for that. This is why, when you're all done painting, you have to let me know so I can send you the Certificate of Inauthenticity, which you can attach to the back of your canvas in order to establish your provenance and give you artistic heft since you have my permission to replicate this composition. I did wait a few more days between my penultimate painting session and this one to finish up the portrait. I do like to wait for the paint to dry and then come back to it so I can see if there's any additional work I need to do that I might have missed. Sometimes, when you're working too close to an artwork, it's hard to spot the areas for improvement without taking a break. The last few steps of the painting are often the easiest because you've already done all the hard work. I basically only adjust a few shadows and add some gelded light to the areas where the gloss dropped out. I use that same mixture of mostly gelded light with a couple drops of gamma salt and applied it directly to the matte areas of the canvas with a clean brush. The remaining touch-ups are often quite subtle, and you might already be done with your painting without having to go back in for small additions and adjustments like I'm making. Ultimately, you know when a painting is finished if you add anything else to it and it doesn't make it look any better. I am just pleased that you did all this hard work to forge this portrait. It's a weird concept, but historically, art apprentices during the Italian Renaissance would copy the artwork created by their teachers. This is why I felt it was most appropriate for you to copy my Renaissance style painting. I also think it's funny how much scholarship has been put into trying to determine the identity of the Mona Lisa and what that will mean for your forgery. One day, hundreds of years in the future, your painting will get donated to a big museum or it will pop up at some hoity-toity auction house and it will be one of many duplicates of Lucrezia Claro. The art experts will scratch their heads Scholars will need to rewrite history books, and the art market will be thrown into disarray. This will all be thanks to you joining me on this project to mess with art history in the future. Who knew that you learning how to paint a portrait using my techniques would be such a subversive and defiant act of conceptual art? I would like to summarize everything I just shared with you to help you finish your painting. As you work, remember to paint the overlapping layers last. Paint is a physical medium, and even though I paint pretty flat and thin, those particles still exist in reality. And so I try to recreate the order of what I see in my reference on my canvas. That's why the background is the first thing I work on and then I build up the skin and then I put the clothing on over the top and then add the hair. As you're working you're going to add those small teeny details at the end. That's why I keep the eyelashes and the eyebrows for this last step. The final layers of paint you add to your canvas are going to be quite translucent to make them see through just mix in a little bit of your medium with your paint. You want your previous work to show through the newest layers of paint, and that's what's going to help sculpt and create form of your model. And as you work, you're just going to refine the details. Keep in mind that you do not need to make a perfect exact duplicate replica of my painting for this to be a successful portrait. If you need some inspiration, look up examples of copy paintings of the Mona Lisa that were done during Leonardo da Vinci's lifetime. The Prado Mona Lisa was done by an artist in his workshop and it is not a clone of the original Mona Lisa, but it is still considered a successful painting. So as you work, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be 
100% accurate for this project to be a success. Once you get all the way done though, please take the time to celebrate. This was not an easy project to complete. Not only are you making a copy painting in a Renaissance style with oil on canvas, but you're also part of my weird conceptual project to mess with art history's future. As you celebrate, photograph your forgery. But please remember to send me one of the pictures. I want to admire your handiwork. After I get a chance to see your painting, I want to send you a certificate of inauthenticity. This will be a very serious and not at all silly certificate that you can attach to the back of your canvas. This will help you establish your provenance. That's the recorded history of the actual work of art. I also want you to display your painting as part of the celebration process. Hang it up somewhere important in your home and invite your friends over to check it out. They're going to ask where on earth you got this fantastic painting and you'll have a few options. First of all, you could just be very honest and say that you learned how to forge this painting step by step from Claire Lockhart herself. But perhaps you want to be more mysterious. Maybe you'll tell your friends you started a life of crime and now you are a skilled art forger. This will be especially funny if you don't have any prior experience making paintings and it will be a complete surprise to them. Otherwise, you could take another route on your life of crime and just say you stole the original. <laughs> what you do is up to you, but whatever story and narrative you construct, please make sure to keep it weird. I want to encourage you to share photos of your forgery. You can share the in-progress pictures and you can also share the painting when it's done. Take pictures of it while it's hanging up. That would be really exciting to see. If you and everybody else who created this forgery shares these pictures with their friends, posts them on social media, this is just going to give us more material to prank those future art historians. All I ask is that you include my name somewhere in the comments so that way those poor future art historians will have a little bit easier job tracing this strange chapter of art history. Before you send your final photo of your forgery to me, I just want to make sure that you remember to crop it down so there's no background at all showing in your picture. And I know oil paintings can be really tricky to photograph, but try to reduce the glare as much as you can. This is where I must admit that I do take my paintings to a professional photographer in order to have them documented, and I need to do this for my website and my professional portfolio. I don't want to discourage you from taking your paintings to a professional photographer, but for this project it is okay just to snap those photos yourself. Just remember to crop it down so just the painting is showing before you send it to me. I know you did a lot of work to create your forgery, but I hope that you had fun with the process. I also hope that you'll have a lot of fun displaying your forgery of Lucrezia Claro and telling stories about it too. Thank you so much for joining me for Steal My Art. You can find additional resources where I share my experience and expertise as an artist through the unaccredited College of Claire. Check it out at patreon.com slash Claire Lockhart.